taking home that beautiful trophy that we saw. Wendy McPherson Papanos choosing to start this match, 29 years old, 11 years on tour. And maybe she wants to change Carol's look. Carol's been starting the matches, so maybe she figures, hey, let's change this up a bit. Going high with her first shot, 3-6-10 left. Well, I know bowlers are superstitious, so that could very well have an impact here. 2-16 average this week. 97 television average, though only 193, Jim. Hmm. And she admitted she doesn't feel like she's number one, hasn't had a great shot for, for her game on TV and has not been executing on TV. So it's been a combination. Not a solid conversion by Wendy. A little <laughs> raised eyebrow there, but no problem. Carol Giannotti Block trying to win back to back. Now, three players have had the chance to do it this fall, but two of them were unsuccessful. Well, that looks like her match before. Solid in the pocket. She's lined up again. And those two players, Marianne DeRupo and Nikki Giannoulias, both having the opportunity. They win one week, turn around, made the telecast the next week, but uh, were inevitably stopped by other players. Oh, ringing 10 pin. That was a really nice shot. Another thing this might... Come in, might come into play later in the year. If she wins tonight, she'll have two titles and be right behind Wendy. This is the shot we just saw here. Six pin flying around the 10. But she could jump into that bowler of the year race also. Well, these are the top two players right here in the merit point standing, the earning list. Very interesting, you're right. And they could be tied for titles at the end of the night. We've got eight more frames to let us know. And uh, there is a look at the 1997 money leaders. And you mentioned Wendy McPherson Papanos. $100,000, it's the earliest that any player has ever reached $100,000 in a season. She's got lots of events left. After coming high on lane 59, sent that one right, making sure she gave it room. Didn't quite get back. Beat it her twice that second time. Uh, very, very close, only one pin. These two are very good friends, too. I know when Carol Giannotti came over in the beginning of her career, used to room with Wendy, stay with Wendy, stayed at our house in California. Actually, they're rooming together now. <laughs> they're rooming together, they're traveling together. Wendy has a five-step approach. She drops the ball quickly. Watch how she pushes out and down on two. Right down, right there. If her timing is late, it's because she carried that ball too long. Look at the follow-through. Nice extension. A little bit stiff with the leg. Pulled up a bit on that shot. Wendy currently trailing by one pin. A little wide, look like, but it makes the turn. In fact, I was taking a look at this year's television, the people that have made the show, and these two players have been on the same telecast. This is the fifth time this year for both of them on the show together. And, you know, they really don't uh, have the same game styles. They are playing in the same area of the lane, but not really the game, same game Yeah, style. they'll sometimes play, like you just said, the same area, but uh, totally different ball roll. Carol's a lot more behind the ball, more ball roll. Wendy has a little bit more spin to her ball. And Carol Giannotti block with a strike here on the fourth, can take that one pin to 11 pins. Mm. Not on that shot. Mm. She's saying, okay, thank you. I can shoot this bear. <laughs> can you read facial expressions? No, we're not hearing the mics tonight. No. I don't know. No, they, they might. They're just not talking. I might have them turned down. I can't believe Carol Giannotti has not said a thing. <laughs> <laughs> very quietly to herself. Actually, he throws a very straight ball towards the corners. Yeah, she flattens that ball out, doesn't change balls, just flattens that out. Yeah, and a look at Barbara Cochran, the general manager here at Bowlerama. Mm, big smile. <laughs> Boy, putting on those 1,700 pro-ams took a lot of work from everybody. Only Barbara Cochran, also uh, Winnie Donovan, the souvenir sales supervisor. Boy, what a job she did. 
selling tons of souvenirs to all those fans. And uh, we know a lot of hours go into not only the preparation here in an LPBT event, but also during the week. Short by Wendy, but the 10 pin not going down. Carrie seems to be a little tough tonight for all of the players at one point or another. Actually hooks the ball to the spare. Well, coming up on ESPN from Caesars Palace in Las Vegas, Nevada, it's the ESPN Championship Boxing. Presents the WBC Lightweight Championships featuring undefeated Steve Johnson battling Saul Duran. Tune in tonight at 8.30 for this bout and the six-round undercard featuring Hector Macho Camacho right here on ESPN. Oh, well, after all of those programs, Saturday and Sunday, after all that bowling, a lot of the players needed some help. And I just wanted to make sure I, great shot by Wendy. The back that I wanted to make sure I thank Dr. Joe Irwin. He came out, he's given us his services for, oh boy, five, six, maybe seven years straight on helping all the players with chiropractic care. And, and we really appreciate it. Keeping them all in line. Her earnings for Carol Giamatti, over $500,000. And that was the shot. She almost threw in the 10th frame against Tish Johnson. Really exactly the shot, but was fortunate in the 10th really? to kick out the 10th. Wow. It's about the fourth arrow at the arrows, going right. Never breaks, the ball never starts to hook. She never hit that hook point on the lane. Mm. Oh, just not quite enough left. Joe Irwin, you mentioned the chiropractor. There he is. He's not in the back helping anybody now. He's no. enjoying some of the bowling. But when we're done, I'm sure he will. <laughs> Somebody out there. All right, look at the scoreboard. Carol Giannotti Block finds herself trailing right now by 14 pins. That uh, washout in the fifth frame has cost her. And a uh, light tap there. The 7 pin falls. We are halfway through the championship match here at the Bowlerama. And for the Columbia 300 Delaware Open, we'll have our champion. Find out who she is when we come back. We're back here in the championship match. We are in the sixth frame. Wendy McPherson Papanos leading by 14 pins. Make it a 24 pin lead if she strikes. Mm. Oh. And she does. When you start racking up honors the way Wendy has, you'd think that titles might just become numbers. Oh, it would be. I had a great week this week. Um, you know, I bowled better than I had expected to have bowled, um, considering the way I've been feeling lately. And it's especially great that my sister and my little niece, Kendall, could come out. They had this planned about two months ago, so I guess it was a good omen that they were able to come out and join me. And, uh, you know, good things happen, I guess. Well, there was some extra special meaning this week for Wendy, as well as uh, what the meaning of the title would be. And, and there's her sister, Blair, and the new baby. Look at her. She's adorable. Kendall Lee Smith. Oh, oh that was great. And quiet. Yeah. I have not heard any baby making any noise here tonight. Must know that Auntie is on the approach. Well, you know, Wendy, talk about Carol being tired. Wendy must be tired. I mean, it's what a run. What a hot streak. Tenth show this year for Wendy. Yeah, too shy of the record. Twelve is a record for a single season, and that was Leanne Barrett and Carol Giannotti. Both hold that record. Hmm. And actually, we have, what, four more events left? So she could break that record. And she actually finished sixth a couple weeks in a row here yeah, she did. recently, sixth and seventh. Mm -hmm. So she was very, very close to actually making those other two shows here this fall. This one, about half pocket. She's trying to line this lane up. She's sending it a little bit farther right earlier, trying to catch that dry. Hmm. Just not finishing. No finish. She's, she's a little puzzled right now, trying to line that lane up as we get carry down. Lanes are changing a bit. Now, Carol will actually not finish on lane 60, so that's actually a good thing for her because she has had a little trouble on that lane. Currently trailing by 21 pins, only three frames left. Yeah, she started out striking over there, first two shots on this in this game, and then all of a sudden the ball just started to slide. 
And she does like lane 59. Wendy McPherson Papanos up now in the eighth frame, 21 pin lead, trying to tie the number of titles won in us this year. She currently has two, Liz Johnson has three, and he's trying to get to number three. Last year's champions, DC United, have clinched a spot in this year's playoffs. New England still fighting to make the cut. That is MLS Soccer here on ESPN. Tuesday, 7.30 p.m. Eastern. See the MLS road to the playoff here on ESPN. You know, Wendy led, this, led the field this week by 376 pins. Wow. And when you lead by that much... You kind of feel it's your tournament, although earlier in the year, three weeks ago, she led by 287 pins in the Players' Championship and lost to Marianne DeRuco. So, well, that's a tough loss when, when it uh, goes down, you know, to, to a one-frame game, or one, one game match. That was a big shot in the ninth for Wendy. And a look at the average leaders. You can see Wendy McPherson Papanos leading the group. Carol Giannotti, currently up now in lane 60, in fourth place, but very close. The bottom three places all within tenths of a point. Oh. oh! She needed to strike. Carol Giannotti needed to strike out in the ninth and tenth to force Wendy to strike. Unfortunately, after the week 10, a washout, then week 10, she made another move, now four pin. She was very close in that shot for actually having as much trouble on that lane as she has had. Well, it almost looks as if the streak of players not being able to win back-to-back -back titles is continuing here. It does look that way. I thought maybe the fact that uh, Carol had won in Delaware in 1992, maybe the city would bring her a little luck, but it was in a different bowling center. Again, it was in Holiday Lanes, not here at Bolarama. She's still striking on lane 59, but the best she can do here is 195. Wendy's not even, not even going to need a mark. Increasing her chances for Bowler of the Year. Ramon Pearson Panos appears to be on her way to be the champion here in Delaware. Well, Carol will lay out a, yet another second place finish to her stats for the year. That'll be three for 1997. She has one first, now three seconds. If she goes on to lose this match, one third, one fourth, and two fifths. Well, in 92, she was runner up to player of the year, and she had four titles that year. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so once again, a runner-up position for Carol Giannotti Block. She finishes out with 192, winning the person Panos. Really just needs pin count. I believe like six pins on this ball would, would end it. Oh, and a big smile from Wendy. Block take six thousand dollars. These roommates have actually shared uh, quite a bit of money here tonight. I'm wondering yeah. who will be buying the dinner. Yeah. Hmm. I think probably Wendy. There, she she got the bigger chunk of of the money. Do you think that they should maybe like buy the entire tour dinner here? Yeah, between the two of them, <laughs> they could throw a nice party. That wouldn't be bad, you know. Cater the whole bit. Well, well, this is the second time they met each other for the championship this year. Last time was at the Lubbock Open in Texas. And Wendy McPherson Papanos won that event. So, uh, Carol Giannotti would have liked to have changed things around tonight, but uh, they didn't have it that way. A big hug from Carol. Wendy McPherson Papanos, our champion here at the Columbia 300 Delaware Open. We'll be back to talk to her. champion of the Columbia 300 Delaware Open. And no, this is not Wendy's child. This is Wendy's niece, Kendall. And she is out here uh, 
to speak with us. However, I think, Wendy, you're going to have to speak for uh, How special was it to have Kendall here? Oh, it was, um, it's great, you know. Um, she's the love of our lives and has brought three months of joy to us. Um, it's my sister Blair's baby, and I'm just the proudest aunt there could be. Any plans for your own anytime soon? <laughs> uh, maybe, you yeah, know, one day. We'll see how, <laughs> how she turns out, you know. Well, you're busy winning titles out here first, right? Jan, I know you have a question. We also have Carol Giannotti, the runner-up, here with us. Yeah, Carol, congratulations. You bowled great. Uh, what happened over there on lane 60? Was it tightening up for you? Yeah, it was tightening up. It was tight to start off with, and it just kept on getting tighter for me, so I just had to keep really square and make sure I couldn't, you know, get it out, and that's when I left the washout, so... But I was pleased. You're happy with your performance? Yeah, I bowled really... I had, you know, three good games on TV, so that, I mean, I was really pleased with that. Carol, I had to ask you, um, you recently went to South Africa. Normally that time is spent for resting, but you guys really didn't. Uh, you said you had a lot of opportunity to practice there. Yeah, we did a lot of exhibitions and uh, talk sessions. I mean, we just had a ball. They took, I mean, there, there's not much knowledge over there, and we left a lot of knowledge, and it was just relaxing. They treated us like queens, and, I mean, it's a great country and great people, and those two weeks just really relaxed me and, you know, got me ready for the fall tour. Well, we will have uh, uh, more comments back uh, with Wendy, our champion. We'll also have the presentations of the check and the trophy when we come back. Don't go away.